All right, guys, so it's time to start working on our captain's helm or captain's console. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to get everything out of here because we are going to utilize keeping this unit, but we are going to build onto it. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to build like a 45 degree angle coming off this to accept our radio and our maybe some of our buttons and things of that nature. So we're going to use the frame of all this because it is aluminum. It's a nice frame. We are just not keeping basically anything on it. So let's go ahead and get this steering wheel off. All right, guys, so one of the things that we are keeping is going to be the steering cable and the actual steering wheel hub. Uh, so I had to get the steering wheel off. Now, the problem with it is that it has a nut and a washer in there, not a big deal. And then it's got a keyway spline that it slides over top of. Except for being there for like 30 years or whatever it's been, um, it didn't want to come off. So what I did was I went ahead and took a sawzall and cut straight through all the way down to the keyway. And, well, it should come off now. Yep. There it is. So you can kind of see what we did there what we got left. So mud wasps have made their way inside there, clear. Uh, but we're gonna unbolt everything from there. We're gonna pull all that unit out of there because we need to keep that. Uh, and then again, we're gonna get rid of all the wood, all the vinyl, and the old school light and everything else that's on here. I may keep this cool plate though. This is from the original build, so I think that'd be kind of cool to keep on it. Uh, but let's go ahead and start stripping some of this thing down. All right guys, so after looking at this, I realized that I gotta take them out from the front. Uh, just because where the nuts are on the back side, there's actually three of them, and they're underneath uh, some of the steering cable housing. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill out uh, these three rivets and pull this thing out of the way. Uh, we're going to use the socket on this side and an open end wrench on the back side to go ahead and pull this thing through. So let me do that real quick. So that's out. Uh, now all I have to do really is just to pull off all this vinyl. So let me go ahead and rip that off. Let's take a look at this frame from the, uh, from the outside. So there it is guys um it's pretty straightforward obviously you can just see it's wood on top of the aluminum frame uh some of the wood's gonna have to be replaced uh most likely this piece here uh and probably even the fascia here because i don't know that i'll keep the steering in the same position i might move it to one side or the other to accommodate uh some of the buttons i don't know for sure exactly what i'm gonna do yet uh we're gonna figure it out here shortly as we move along there is one thing I have never seen before, uh, and definitely is strange. They bring this thing to a whole new level. Um, so we know that the frame is obviously aluminum, which is cool, uh, but the side wood is actually stapled into the aluminum. I don't know what kind of stapler you buy that can staple into aluminum, but it's pretty impressive, and I ain't got one. So uh, those panels are going to be coming off. You can see they're fraying. They're kind of turned into junk. So that, as well as the back, because there's like nothing to it. That's got to go. Uh, so we're going to replace that with some decent wood even though it's $3 billion a sheet now at the uh, hardware stores. We are gonna replace it, uh, but again, the idea here is we wanna, if possible, maybe make this kind of come out at a 45, um, so we can put our radio and stuff there, just kind of give a different look. If I can, I'm gonna try. Um, so let's go ahead and finish taking some of the stuff apart and let me come up with an idea of what'll work for us. All right, guys, since, since the weather's been kind of crazy here, we're gonna try to utilize some of the AC inside the shop. So we're gonna go ahead and do this part indoors, but we are gonna be working now on the center console or the captain's helm, you might call it. Uh, basically what we're doing, you already see that I've taken the vinyl off it and the padding and whatnot. Uh, even the wood, the wood's gotta go. The wood's pretty much shot. It's, you probably can't see, but it's, it's no good. Um, it's all rotten. Uh, but I was gonna make it bigger and realize I'm kinda of limited on space is how I would want to do it, only because um, I would like to build the controls and a console coming down. But the way the controls are, it's an older style. I need to be able to hit the buttons on the front and rear of it. Uh, so it's really not a good idea. So I'm not gonna do that. I am gonna utilize the size of it right now. However, I do need to make it taller. So what I've decided to do uh, is basically, I'm gonna bring the side over here all the way straight down. Uh, this one's still gonna be indented here because you gotta be able to slide your feet inside there um, when you are getting in and out of the chair. Uh, but we are gonna make it taller. So. I don't know 100% yet, we'll see once we start cutting. The, uh, the steering wheel might get moved over a little bit. Uh, it's possible if I move it this side closer to the deck like I was planning uh, to give more room for the passengers. So I think what'll probably happen is the steering wheel will probably go right about here. Then we'll have our, all our controls and maybe our GPS speedometer that we're adding from the CD project over here. Uh, and then I'm gonna have to make it slightly taller right here. Um, basically this is because this is a cheap radio we bought off Amazon for less than 70 bucks this unit here is going to uh, basically it's not waterproof so I have to cover it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it back a little ways uh, and bring this up higher and out almost like a uh, kind of a visor in a way so I'm gonna have to build the side pieces up 
That works out though because the side pieces are gonna be wrapped in vinyl, which you see as we go. So the first thing I need to do, I need to get some wood. I need to start tracing some things out so I can cut out some wood. So let's go ahead and do that and move forward. All right, so what we're doing now, we have to get some wood cut. And because my trailer's not free, I gotta be able to fit it in my SUV. So I need to get the wood cut. However, I don't wanna cut it and jeopardize the sizing that I need for the pieces of wood here. So I've went ahead and put some basic measurements of what it is I'm gonna need. Laid out the bitter, bigger sections on a sheet of plywood where I can get them to cut that to get it inside my SUV. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and head to the local home improvement store, get the supplies that we need, and uh, start building this thing. Now I'm typically a fan of the uh, blue stores over the orange store. However, the orange store has much better lumber and pricing uh, than the blue store does on wood. So, orange store it is. Man, not for nothing, guys, but I'm going to tell you, this wood is awful. Look how twisted it is. I don't even know how this is even possible to be used. I don't know what we're going to do to find a flat piece. Um, I don't know. I'll figure out something. Let me see what I can find. All right, guys, so it looks like I am going to have to go to the blue store because, uh, you know, we got to use plywood so the moisture won't destroy a lot of the particle type board. Um, and if we don't use a, a good plywood that's straight, we're not going to get good results. So let's head over to the other store. All right guys, so we're walking to the blue store, crossing my fingers, hopefully I have better luck than I normally do at these places. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky and find something good. Let's see what they got. All right guys, so far it looks better than it did. So let's see if we can find what it is we're looking for. Price is just slightly higher, um, but that's okay. The wood looks a heck of a lot straighter. And actually for all of you, I don't know where you're at, Midwest, our prices have went significantly down from what they were, uh, less than half with the crazy shortage of wood. So let's go ahead and get something cut. All right guys, so I think we found what we want. Uh, yeah, it's double the price of regular plywood, but it's actually a hardwood uh, and it's super flat and smooth. Uh, I'll, I'll pay the money, I don't care. Let me see if I can find a cart, we'll get this thing cut in half. All right, well, let's see how lucky we are or not. Got it, let's move on. All right guys, so we're back in the shop now, getting ready to cut some wood. Uh, I don't know if you can tell the markings there. You have the back, you have the uh, right, and then you have the uh, left over here, uh, similar to what you see here on the paper, kind of the way we we're setting it up. Uh, so we're going to get those cut out, get those mounted. We'll cut the top out too. And then one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be making two 8-inch subwoofers into the box built into the front of this thing. I was going to put them initially in the front cargo area, the front seating area. The problem is it's going to take away more storage up there. So we want to keep all the storage that we can. Uh, so for now, we're going to mount those in the fascia of the helm right here. I think it'll look pretty cool. Uh, and actually it'd be really easy to access all the wiring with all the rest of the wiring being inside here So let's go ahead and get these things cut out right now All right guys, so there is some of our wood pieces that are cut out uh, just a disclaimer. I am no wood craftsman uh, I don't claim to be as a kid. I used to make a ton of speaker boxes was really good at it uh, But that's because it was getting covered. So uh, same situation here. There's gonna be no difference all this is getting covered uh, and basically the way it's going to work is we're going to be wrapping everything. Uh, we'll be putting bolts to the, under the, the underside of it to be able to mount to the frame of this. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. What I need to do right now, um, I need to replace this piece here. This piece is going to stay because our mount to our uh, fish finder basically covers it. And the wires will round down inside it. So that top piece can stay. However, it does have to be removed to be wrapped. Um, and there's a few other pieces that got to be taken off and then be wrapped as well. So I'll show you how I do that. But uh, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm not gonna attempt to take off this little thin sheet of eighth inch wood on the sides, uh, just because I don't wanna contend with the staples that are stapling it on. Uh, it doesn't look very fun. So I'm gonna leave it on there. However, I am have to, I'm gonna have to cut out a section on the front side because our sub box is gonna be built into there and I don't want this in between it. Um, so let me go ahead and let me kind of skeletonize that thing uh, and start getting this thing ready to uh, get some vinyl wrapped around it and get uh, get ready to uh, get put it together. All right, guys, so moving forward, I got most of the uh, old junky wood off it, again, with the exception of the sides, which I'm not going to fight with. The back actually was able to push off. Uh, the staples are still in there, but I can think I could pop those out, obviously, with a flathead screwdriver. It's still amazing they could get a staple into metal, whatever. Um, right now I'm working on the back piece, or actually the front piece, which is also serving as a speaker box. It will utilize two eight inch subwoofers. So what I've done is I've set them just high enough uh, so I can get my lower bracket bolts to mount this back onto the floor um, and then keep them up high enough so it's not gonna sit in the moisture. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a box onto the back of this piece of wood 
then it will be uh, prepped and ready to be put back onto the helm there. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward. I got a couple more pieces to cut. We are gonna use a uh, nail gun, nail this thing together and use some liquid nails to seal all the way around the inside of it to keep it sealed. All right guys, so we got our wood for the speaker box cut. Um, obviously you see the face still there. These are the sides and the backing. Uh, we're gonna be using a staple gun to staple it together and again some uh, liquid nails to seal all the insides to make sure we get a clean sound. Now I know there's gonna be some audio snoop snobs out there that are they're gonna to wanna to say, oh, well that box isn't gonna be big enough and it's not the right wood and you're not gonna get the right lows out of it. We're not going for competition sound. It's gonna be mostly for looks and decent sound for everybody hanging out. I'm not trying to promote or even attempt to pull around wakeboarders to get them amped to hit waves. It's, just, it's a pontoon, we don't really do that. So most of the sound I wanna come through the mids and highs uh, because you're on a basically a, a party barge hanging out. So we're not really trying to slam bass or have a concert. Um, though with the amp, I think it's like four or 600 watts. It's, it should be enough to get some decent sound out of. Um, but like I said, this is just really for more or less sound, not low heart throbbing, pounding bass. So let me get this put together. I'll show you what it looks like. Give me just a moment. All right, so here you'll see it. Uh, I went ahead and did seal it in. Now I didn't have any liquid nails, but I actually had one step better, uh, which is Loctite brand. Uh, it's the premium construction adhesive. Uh, this stuff is pretty much like panel bond for like body parts. If you guys have ever used this, this is far, far superior, uh, in my opinion, to uh, liquid nails. Uh, it's a much harder product and it is a much stronger product. Anyhow, I went ahead and sealed that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, as you see, I marked edges uh, where this board's gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bead the edges, basically the top of this, before I slide it on. Uh, then, then I'm gonna uh, nail it all around the exterior of it so it's solid and basically set. This will obviously be sitting to dry. Um, when that's done, it'll be ready to have the subs put in, test fitted. Uh, but for now, like I said, we're gonna move forward to keep working on our wood, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so there is the front panel slash speaker box. Uh, I thought it turned out pretty good. Um, I had a couple shortcomings with the nails, but hey, it's held together nonetheless. Uh, not perfect, but it looks good. I do want you to notice something though. Um, if you'll notice our handy dandy $50 sheet of wood is already warping from the moisture in the air. So it's gonna be important that these things are bolted down. Now what I'm gonna be doing is this thing's gonna be wrapped basically with uh, white vinyl, marine vinyl, but I don't want to have to sew any of it. Now why I can, don't judge me, I can sew vinyl, I've done it many times. I don't like to, and I want this piece more modular so it could be removed because we are gonna be mounting potentially an amp up here and a lot of different electronics, and I wanna be able to, to get to those electronics if I need to. So what we're gonna do, uh, it's really simple. Each piece is gonna be individually wrapped with the exception of this front. This front's gonna get a special layer, uh, which is gonna be this wood-looking plastic right here, um, which will be basically matching the front benches. But anyhow, uh, it's gonna be wrapped in white vinyl. And what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna drill, I'll just use this for an example, even though we're not gonna be using this piece. We're gonna drill through this thing and countersink some stainless steel bolts through it. Uh, and then we're gonna wrap it all the way around the face of it, for example bolt it on and put the screw nut in from the uh, the bolt nut in from the back. Um, so it's gonna basically be a modular piece that are all gonna be bolted together uh, and each piece will hide each other's seams or rear staples and stuff like that where we wrap it. You'll see what I mean when I do this. Um, again, the front piece isn't gonna be done that way but all the sides, top and everything else is. I just wanted to give you an idea of how we were doing it. I'm gonna show you an example on one of the pieces coming up. I'm not gonna drag you through every single piece as we build this. However, I wanted you to know exactly how this thing was gonna go down. So let me go ahead and get one of these pieces ready. We will drill it. I will glue the uh, screws in, and then we will wrap with vinyl. I'll give you an idea of exactly what it is I'm talking about. All right, guys, moving on to making this thing more modular. Let me show you exactly what it is that I mean when I say modular. Um, basically, well, we'll take this off for now. Um, this whole piece, this is all one piece. This is uh, basically bolted together. But what I'm gonna do, uh, this is all covered here. I don't, I don't care about that because I'll have a cover over it and I'll have access to screws to put down the top. However, the front side, unless I was to use like license plate caps, which work okay uh, to hide the screws, I want to put the screws inside the wood before I cut vinyl, basically vinyl it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in some screws and hot glue them after I countersink them in here. Um, and then and I'll cover it and what will happen is those bolts will be accessed through the back. I'll be able to put nuts on them. So when I want to take this thing off, AKA modular, I can unbolt the bolts, take off the wood, take out the two upper screws, and this whole thing will slide right off. 
So let's go ahead and let's get this thing carved and I'll show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. All right, so there you guys have it. There are the screws or the bolts uh, glued down in. So you can do this one handed. Now all you're gonna do is basically line up your holes just like so. It slides right in and then again, it's gonna screw on from the back. So like I said, right now I gotta go ahead and cover this in vinyl. After I cover it in vinyl, I will go ahead and I will mount from below uh, the radio holder. Um, which looks off square, but it's not, it's just the camera. Um, and then again, we will be later on mounting the uh, fish finder depth finder here. So let's go ahead and get that stuff set up. All right, so next what we're gonna do to upholster is we're gonna wrap uh, the face of it with some foam. Uh, the foam basically hides imperfections uh, if you have sharp edges or rough wood. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap this around it, tape it, and then we'll wrap the vinyl and staple it from behind. So once you have your foam wrapped, all we're gonna do again is cut out a piece of vinyl that'll cover basically everything with a few inches left over to overwrap overlap uh wrap this around we're gonna go ahead and staple you want to staple one side pull it really tight wrap the other side staple and then we'll start doing the sides and let me show you what it looks like when it's all done all right guys there's everything wrapped you want to make sure to be careful not to mount mount up too much or mount up too much uh vinyl down here because you want it to sit flat uh, look up in the front so basically what it is all i gotta do is cut out the circles to uh to finish it so let's go ahead and get that put on all right guys, so there you'll see it. Um, basically, we got it just temporarily sitting on here. We went ahead and uh, nailed on the, uh, with a nail gun, nailed on the uh, head unit uh, bracket or mount, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you look behind it, we have a hole, so the wire will run down into it to the fuse section. All there is left to do now is uh, screws in the back corners, put the nuts on the front fascia to bolt that down. Uh, and again, everything else is gonna be modular as well, so your side panels will fit over it to kind of cover everything, a top panel as well. Um, and then obviously kick panel and face panel. Face panel here will be a thinner wood and we will use um, like a heavy duty Velcro so it'll be removable because our amplifier will be mounted on the back of the box right here. Uh, and we still have to put in our uh, instrument panel or our, our, our switch panel I should call it, our, our GPS speedometer and then obviously the steering wheel mounts here. So let's go ahead and move forward and get some more work done on this thing. All right, so I was lucky enough to clean up some of the shop. I was getting irritated, there was stuff everywhere from this project. So anyways, got a little bit of it out of the way now. Uh, now we're gonna move forward. We are gonna go ahead and drill uh, the side panels and glue in our bolts before we wrap them uh, to get those on. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so guys, just to recap, uh, again, you're gonna line everything up perfectly at the panel to the, uh, the main unit. Uh, you're gonna drill a hole, put the screw through, drill the rest of the three holes, putting the screw in one at a time. Uh, and then once it's all lined up, you know that everything is good, back it out, use a larger, uh, larger drill bit to uh, basically countersink it, and then glue it in. Once it's dried, pry it out, and then you're gonna wanna use a slightly larger drill bit on the frame itself so you have a little bit of wiggle room so this will go in nice and easy, you won't have to fight with it. So that's the basics of setting up the, uh, the basically the, the mounting system. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these real quick like I said a minute ago. So here's one of our finished modular panels. Uh, you can see the front and back how it's covered. Uh, again, uh, after I covered it, you wanna make sure you cut around the bolts and cut off any excess that would be lumped up here where you're kind of folding over because we wanna get that thing to sit as uh, smooth as we can against the, uh, the actual or the main unit itself. So let me go ahead and install this. So moving forward, the side panels are on. I have not yet bolted down the fascia of it. And the reason why is we have a few things to do knowing that we're putting electronics in it. Uh, that said, the next part that we're gonna be doing is we actually are gonna be taking this speaker and mounting it inside. The reason for that is because most of the time you're gonna have the six main speakers running off an amplifier. You might have times where you're sitting at in the middle of the lake just kinda of hanging out um, and you don't need all that power, you just want a little bit of sound. And what we'll do with this speaker right here, which while it looks terrible, it's still a good working JBL Marine speaker, uh, we're gonna go ahead and mount it inside here and run it directly off the deck wiring. Uh, so the deck will actually be powering this. Now you won't hear it normally because it'll be much quieter than the others, but at least this way we have a switch where we'll turn off the amplifier or be able to anyhow, uh, so we can run just a single speaker just to get a little bit of sound and not hardly wear the battery whatsoever. So let me go ahead and uh, get that thing set up. And there it is, guys. So uh, we got it all mounted in, uh, screwed in, and ready to go. It just has to obviously be wired in once we put the head unit in, but uh, that piece is ready to go. Let's go ahead and move forward. All right, so as you guys can see, a lot of the paneling is on now. Uh, some of it's just on temporarily. Uh, as you can see, like here, these are just sitting, the top's just sitting there for now. Um, I do have to do some more work on trying to get the wrinkles and looseness out of the edges right here. Uh, so when it's bolted on, that should be a lot better looking. Uh, I have some trimming to do to make the top sit flush, so that's coming. Um, another thing you'll probably notice here is our footwell or our step. 
Uh, and what this is, this is a white PVC vinyl. You can get it at most of your big box stores that are for home improvement. Um, pretty cool stuff because it's weatherproof. It doesn't get mildew on it, and uh, it just it's overall a pretty nice product. So, spoiler alert, this will be on a lot of the furniture that we are building for this project. So, keep an eye out for that. Uh, anyhow, now that we're getting this thing kind of moved forward, I need to start doing some final touches and getting things set up so I can actually get this thing ready to get put on. We still have some electrical work to do right now. It's just sitting there. I haven't run any electrical. That's coming up here shortly, uh, but let's go ahead and move forward. All right, guys, so moving forward, we are going to be putting on our PVC shiplap, and what we'll be doing uh, is we'll be installing it and leaving a quarter-inch gap to give it that real shiplap look between each one. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the spray paint and just spray painting a black line here to give it that kind of dark contrast, uh, just basically between, between where the boards are going to go. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. And so there you go. There's no real science behind it, obviously. I went ahead and just marked where the shiplap would go and a quarter-inch underneath every time. I then just spray painted lines across it, so it doesn't look like much now, but like I said, it'll look really good when we get that shiplap on there and all you see between the gaps are the dark black. So let's go ahead and move forward. we got to start cutting to get this stuff installed. All right, guys, so you can keep, see we got the PVC slat wall all on now. Again, we gapped it about a quarter inch all the way down. Uh, what we're going to do now, uh, we're getting ready to cut out the speakers to the inset inside there, uh, so it's a nice flush look all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and take a jigsaw and cut those out real quick. All right, so next step, uh, we're gonna mount the speakers in. Uh, this one came out pretty much perfect. This one, eh, not so much. So I'm hoping that I don't have that offset uh, because I didn't use a solid board all the way through, which I should have, to find a center point to mark it from. Um, so FYI, next time you do it, you really should come from the bottom and top and find your exact center point. I didn't do that, I kind of screwed up. Uh, but that's okay, it, it, it should be fine. Uh, but right now what we gotta do is we gotta put the speakers in to basically work around them. So I'm gonna take three feet of uh, speaker wire for each one, run it out the holes in the back, connect the speakers, screw the speakers in, and then we'll start working around it. All right guys, just about to drop the second speaker in. Uh, it's wired, uh, but a quick old school uh, tip from back in the day, I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some polyfill or basically pillow filling inside here. And what that does is it kind of emulates a larger box. It takes the base longer to get through the polyfill to bounce off the back wall. Um, in my experience, it always worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there since this box is somewhat tight. Uh, and typically what you get out of that is a little bit deeper base since it's a small subwoofer. Uh, the deeper, obviously, the better. We're not going for slamming base, just uh, a little bit better sound. So I'm gonna stick some of that in there lightly. Uh, we're gonna put this thing in here and get the rest of the slat wall on. All right, guys, so there you have it. There's the speakers in and mounted and ready to go. Um, it's not perfect, but uh, you know, using a jigsaw, I know there's gotta be a better way to cut that out and set that out, like with some kind of router or something. I just don't have that means. Uh, if you guys do know how to do that, please leave a comment below and let me know. That'd be great, especially if there's a future uh, part to this. So anyways, we're gonna move forward. It's time to start hitting some of the electronics. Okay, so moving forward, we're gonna start with the electrical part. And the electrical part for us is gonna start within the helm. Uh, this is where the uh, fuse box is gonna be located, the switch panel and all the, basically the, the, the main brains of the electrical. So uh, what we're working with right now, as you can see the back of the panel here, now this fuse panel is actually wired. Uh, so basically it has a ground in and a power in, and then you basically put your pins to whatever switch you want. The problem with that, that works fine if you're doing the old school original way with a single fuse like this. However, we are not, we are gonna be using a fuse panel. And so what I have to do is basically, I have to run the power on the ground to this, we split off the ground from this, to that because the ground doesn't matter as long as they're both grounded uh, and then what i have to do is i actually have to run um i have to basically take get rid of the uh the red wires here and run direct wires from each fuse to each panel and then from this to let's say the radio and to the gps and to the fish finder and everything else so that way if something happens everything is separated and the reason for that the reason we're not using a single fuse anymore is with the stereo load and all the extra electronics it's a lot different from what it used to be just having basically nav lights and nothing else so that said let's go ahead and move forward i'm gonna start pulling some of this wiring off rewiring it, and i'll show you what that looks like all right to give you guys an update uh within the wiring what we've done again these were all connected so basically this wire here connected up to this and it kind of looped and just kept going down through there um, <clears throat> i didn't realize at first that uh, there's actually multiple wiring connections because it has all leds built into it uh, so rather than ripping all that off and creating all new wiring and a mess of wiring i went ahead again and cut like this from right here and that one from right there uh, and spliced in that way and then you'll see each one of these wires runs down to its own bank or its own fuse 
Uh, so we have all six connected now, and now what I have to do is I have to run power wires from this unit here, this uh, uh, male spade connector here, to whatever perspective thing it's going to, like for example, the GPS speedometer. So one will come from the GPS speedometer to that, one will go from this to the radio, one will go from this to the amp, uh, so on, so on. So let's go ahead and get that wiring in, and then I'll show you kind of how we uh, do some of the main power. Okay, it's a little bit of update on the wiring. We got everything moving uh, quite smoothly. Um, there is still kind of a rat's nest. Uh, I'm not done wiring, uh, but this is just kind of uh, a next step. I wanted to show you kind of where we were at. Um, if you look back here, the radio is wired in, and what you will notice is different is that a uh, speaker that was all by itself is no longer here. And the reason why is I kind of screwed up. I didn't really realize that the uh, the steering box that goes behind here actually was hitting it, or, or it would have cleared it if had I put the steering in first. So if I choose to do so, I'm going to have to move it farther over there. I also have to keep in mind the cable that's coming down and over and out, the actual steering cable, uh, because, well, it's got to have clearance. Now, I did notice that I was one button short of having an actual amplifier cutoff switch anyhow. So for now, I'm Xing that, but it is a great idea to have. And if you guys have the ability and the, the switch power to do it, definitely do it. Um, but anyways, moving forward, we have another surprise here, which is an old amplifier from a basketball old Sea-Doo boat. Um, it's getting reused, repurposed. It's been sitting in the shop for, I don't know, like seven years not being used. So I hope it still works. Um, anyhow, we got most everything wired up. Uh, we are waiting on one more splitter because uh, this is a four channel amp and only two channel RCAs come out of the back of that cheapo head unit. So I uh, just have to get another splitter to get that connected right there. Um, I do still have to hook up obviously power and ground from the battery and the chassis or the boat chassis or engine, whatever you want to call it to the amp which will then split off from the amp to the main fuse panel there uh, and then we have two more wires to hook up to our panel right here which is the accessory lights basically your navigation lights and we have a whole boatload of leds that are going on this so that will control all that so that's pretty much it for wiring uh, we have a little bit of work to do on the very top of it right now i'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on it and i'll show you what we're doing all right, guys, so there goes the uh, upper lid. Uh, and just to give you an FYI as to how we hide the screws or conceal them, uh, basically we're just using, again, uh, little caps like that. Basically hides uh, all our screws that we need to have access to. And I wasn't able to get the little bit of uh, wrinkles out right there. Uh, it's just the way it was stretched, so I guess I'm just gonna have to deal with that. But things, uh, things could be worse, so I'm okay with it so far. I think it's turned out really nice. Uh, we've definitely added some weight to it, so uh, that's where the 28 foot pontoons are really going to come into play because the longer the better the more weight it'll hold um, So fortunately uh, everything so far seems to be going pretty smoothly Right now what we have to do is get the steering cable on and then this thing's going on the boat And we're going to have to start finishing our uh, main wiring All right next step is going to be uh, mounting our steering wheel uh, and cable to the actual helm itself So let me go ahead and put that on it's going to be the reverse of uh, what we obviously when we took it off It's just three bolts uh, coming this way uh, and a mounting plate over top of that that gets riveted on All right guys, so the next part is installing the steering wheel. I'm kind of excited about this part because it definitely helps bring this thing all to uh, a Much better looking piece. So let me go ahead and put that on and show you what that looks like How about that guys that actually looks I think absolutely fantastic uh, We still have some stuff to do like peeling off that we've got one here to get off uh, and yeah so uh yeah it's time to put this thing on the uh on the boat all right guys so before we install the helm uh, i'm gonna go ahead and install the bimini tops now right now we actually have some shade which is cool but i would like to have permanent shades so when we're working on the furnitures and everything else uh we don't have to worry about getting burned up in the sun um, that said, this is kind of a fairly simple uh, setup. Um, if you're doing this by yourself, it's not too hard figuring out where to position it if you don't already have your mounts mounted to the upper rails. Um, typically, like uh, we got two of them we're going to install, uh, and they are eight foot length, so you could always figure out your center point, which would be four feet, let's say maybe right here, and put your mounts there and you know measure from the back forward four feet or whatever you're going to do. Uh, when you have a second person, it's kind of nice because I can have myself up here holding it and the other person back looking at it, seeing how it's fitted and the way it looks as far as positioning. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, however, before that happens, I need to get this thing assembled. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is, has a rear uh, pole support and this, this pole right here. So what you want to do is kind of get it in position as to the way it would be sitting on the boat, like so. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to take all three of your, I'm sorry, four of your bars 
we're gonna put them inside here and then we're gonna slide the uh, the black cover over top of it and then install the other side so let me show you what that looks like when it's together all right guys so there's the rear one and again it's just sitting out here temporarily we're trying to make sure that we've got it mocked up right as to where it's supposed to go um, I did go ahead and uh, drill two bolts on each side or two holes on each side for the main bolts which are just being held on with uh, regular nuts right now that will be changed over to lock nuts um, and then if you look at the back corner here uh, it's kind of tough to tell but we got it forward about a foot to 15 inches from the very back. And the reason why, not to have a spoiler, but I guess that's what it's gonna be, we're planning on putting a grill back here. Um, so some people mount the grills behind the bar. I don't know how we're gonna do that yet. We'll look into that. Uh, but like I said, I'm just trying to get an idea of exactly how that's gonna sit. Um, and then also with the controls, I had to make sure that my controls, my hand didn't hit the bar, so. Couple more permanent bolts to go in. We'll stretch this thing out. I might even have to cut the tube shorter to get them a nice tight fit. As you see right now, it's a little loose. Uh, we want that nice and tight, but uh, we'll tighten that thing up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, so we went ahead and put in the permanent uh, bolts and screws, or I'm sorry, bolts and nuts here to hold the main frame on. Now we move to the back um, where you can see we have to basically align this to where we want it. Uh, it's actually gotta come forward a little ways. Uh, we'll mark it. We're gonna tap and uh, bolt this down as well. Uh, now the top, these are all adjustable as well, um, so you want to basically adjust them up or down so you can make sure that you don't have this. This has to be nice and tight, so you're stretching front to back. In addition to, uh, we have to put basically some hooks uh, here up on the front side that this is going to strap to, so this will get a nice tight fit as well. So let me go ahead and screw those in. Alright, so the hardware is on now. You'll see everything's clamped down. I got everything tightened down nice and tight as tight as going to get it. This is the manufacturer of these Bimini tops bought from eBay. The link will be in the description below. Um, I want to tell you that the uh, quality is not anywhere near the quality of the rigid square tube that was originally on it. So if you're looking to put one on these and really budget isn't too big of an, a deal for you, then you might want to consider getting a square tube. Uh, and this is, I'll tell you what I mean why. I don't know if you can kind of see that. It, it's not the most sturdy it's very flexible let's just put it that way so but you get what you pay for for two of them for under 400 bucks i think it's still a really good deal plus we needed them to match and i wasn't going to spend a book amount of money trying to find another square tube uh, also if you can see that sun coming directly through the that's not sparkles that's the sun coming through the fabric so you know these are definitely not long-term product um, so it's up to you to take care of them. They do come with a cover, so I suggest keeping them covered and obviously not traveling with the top up like this, at least back against the, uh, the, the, uh, the pole in the back here set back. Um, but granted, you know, you're, you're on a pontoon, you're not going 400 miles an hour, so we'll be lucky if this thing goes 15. Anyhow, there's one more to put on and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, guys, so there are the tops both installed. Uh, just something to note, nothing big, um, but the front one definitely sits taller and shorter than the rear one. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, because if you look at the positioning of the clamps on the poles, they're about the same. Uh, so I will try to fix that, not a big deal. I just wanted to show you kind of what it looked like from the outside. Uh, let's go ahead and go up on top and see what it looks like from the inside. All right, guys, so here it is from the inside. Uh, talking presentation, I think they look fantastic. Uh, they do a really good job at keeping the sun out, as you can kind of see. It's super bright, uh, but we walk underneath this and it's out of our eyes. So that is a really nice feature. Uh, there is a nice space in between the two, uh, which allows us to still be in the sun, um, have some sunlight come on the deck and light the boat, uh, but it gets you out of that direct sun when you don't want to be out there all day getting burned up in the sun. So I think it actually is a good, fantastic part of that. Now this is not a sponsored video. Again, I, I wasn't sponsored by this company. Um, as I showed you earlier, it's got a little bit of wobble. That's pretty much the same as any other top that I've bought uh, from eBay or anywhere online for any of my boats I've done builds on. Um, they're typically cheaper. This one said it had double walls. I don't think it's any different, honestly, than any other one that I've ever purchased. Um, but nonetheless, this is what it is. Uh, that said, that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. There's just so much footage to show you on this build. Um, I, every little minute, even though I take the, the clips and I try to make them really fast and short, there, there's still there's so many of them. I don't want to skip anything uh, and have you guys wondering, what what'd you do on that? So I try to get everything in, but that means I have to make the videos somewhat shorter. Um, that said, there is a ton of stuff coming up. So 
you know, I, I could do videos where it shows basically an electrical section and this section. The problem is if you guys are doing any kind of build like this, it's going to kind of throw you around if it's a larger project. And I don't think that you would want that. Uh, but go ahead and leave a comment below. If that's something you want and you'd rather it sectioned off, like an electrical and then a furniture section, I can do that. Uh, but in the past, people typically ask me to just kind of go through the project as I would as if they were building it. So that's kind of what we do. Anyhow... That's a wrap for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you guys find it helpful, you know the drill. Keep the thumbs up. Uh, I'm going. And uh, other than that, if you're not subscribed already, definitely do so. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.